Hello, Internet. I'm Chamomile, and we're playing the Republican campaign for Political Machine 2016. You do need the DLC to play this campaign, but if you have the game, you have the DLC, because it's basically just the demo without it. You might actually remember earlier this year that EA sued Starbuck because it turns out they have that trademarked. You can make your own made-up candidate, but to keep things balanced, we're just going to pick the strongest candidate who is an actual real person. And obviously, that's Min Max the Clown. Jimmy Carter is apparently the worst Democrat in American history, so our strategy is going to rely mainly on two things. And the first and most important is having lots of money, which we'll spend on hiring people to show for us. The next, equally important part of our political strategy is to fly to a random gray state and talk about how much we hate ISIS. You know, if terrorists came to Oklahoma, that would just, that would be bad. Boo terrorism, vote for me. There's, there's no gambling in, it's not allowed by the ISIS Bible. So without Las Vegas, what even is your state? Just deserts. And that's when the terrorists win, when there's deserts. There's an interview waiting for me up there in Ohio. Interviews are usually a pretty bad idea for Min-Max because his intelligence isn't the greatest, but my opponent is Jimmy Carter, so what the hell. Okay, let's see here. Spanking, I'm in favor. But children, what, no, what, what kind of show is this? Spanking and other sex acts should be kept strictly to adults. All right, what else we got? Um, minimum wage, uh, we can't raise the minimum wage. We, we need to support job creators. Wow, they bought that? <laughs> Jimmy's trying to fight me for the South. Yeah, this ain't the 70s, pal. Republicans always win the South. Can you imagine how incompetent the Republican Party would have to be to lose an election in, like, Alabama or wherever? A trained monkey could win that state if he had a red tie. Dorothy wouldn't want... Dor Dorothy is anti-ISIS, and so am I. Fight ISIS and uh, for freedom and, and for wheat. You get a little ratings boost just for visiting a state at all, and apparently this works even if you don't actually do anything in that state. So you can break a few deadlocks with a couple of layovers. So when choosing a vice presidential candidate, the primary thing you're interested in is the money they bring to your campaign. It can give you a good second wind. Let's see, uh... Donald Trump's is pretty good. Oh, Mitt Romney, eight. That's the highest I've seen so far. Newt Gingrich, he's a good primary, but not a very good VP candidate. Oh, Republic about the Terminator, perfect. There's no Kentucky Fried Chicken in ISIS world. That's because they worship chickens. Which is also why there's that thing with Pakistan and India. Some have accused me of confusing this great state of Kansas with Nebraska. But here's the real truth. Uh-huh. Wait, so where are we now? Quit pulling my leg, there's no such thing. Alright, I'm gonna try and snake California just to rub Jimmy's nose in it. I've already got some infrastructure here just for fundraising. So, alright, um, where's ISIS? How can they not want to hear about ISIS? Uh, oh god, they're all Democrats! Uh, I can't talk about gas prices, Jimmy's totally owning that issue! Um, uh, trees! Trees! I love trees! Yay trees! I was just talking to Legolas the other day about how great trees are. Oh, come on, Pennsylvania? Like Transylvania, but nerdier? Is there a vampire with little pencils for teeth out in the audience? Come on, tell me where we are, really. I, I'm not entirely sure what Zika is, but I will fund it. Apparently, the media is using a bold new definition of battleground state this election. Fellow Americans, can you believe my advisor is trying to convince me we're in Pennsylvania right now? Yeah. They also don't want me to do that Stephen Coldcut interview later tonight, but I think we've seen how valuable their advice is. I fucking love cocaine! All we're missing is a little cartoon Nate Silver taking them to task for it. I kind of have to admire Jimmy Carter's determination to keep campaigning in the face of a ruby red California. I'm pretty sure there was something about fighting ISIS in that musical of yours, wasn't there? You always want to stick to non-controversial topics for your speeches, because that's how you win a presidential election in 2016, apparently. You can flip-flop like mad state to state and no one will notice, though. Like, Portland probably won't appreciate this pro-coal speech, but apparently they don't have YouTube and won't notice anything I do in West Virginia. 
So this map looks kind of like Jimmy might still stand a chance, but when you take into account that our purple state is just a state that Jimmy Carter has put a lot of effort into losing, I've pretty much won. By like, a lot. By a lot, a lot. Terrorists are like polar bears in that we should shoot them when they come to Alaska, but at a sustainable rate so we can continue selling their pelts. I've mostly ignored the Mafia because it's Jimmy Carter and effort is for uncool people. They are pretty important to winning states though, which is why I'm just gonna bury California in them. Just because I really want that feather in my cap and Jimmy keeps trying to take it back. Like, I've got a spin doctor who will improve my ratings, and a smear merchant who will hurt his, and probably a goon squad who will break his voters' kneecaps or something. Ladies and gentlemen, it's election night and the results are already starting to come in from the East Coast. For those of you who take your news only from crazy internet blogs, Jimmy Carter is favored for the win by most media sources due to his vaguely defined electoral advantage and delusions concerning his competitiveness in the less than five critical battleground states. We do have some Southern states reporting in from Inmax the Clown now, but Jimmy Carter's lead remains strong. Critics of media predictions are already looking foolish, as Jimmy has managed a 2-1 electoral vote lead so far, and we haven't even gotten to Florida, Texas, or California yet, all of which are predicted to be Carter victories for reasons which are secret, but very good. We do now have reports confirming that Florida has voted for Minmax the Clown, but Carter is still favored to win in Texas and California. The Rust Belt is now reporting fear of clowns at an all-time low. Alabama reporting in favor of Midmax. No surprise there. A trained monkey in a red tie could win that one. Sources in Texas remain confident that the state will vote for Jimmy Carter on the grounds that we painted it purple on our prediction map, and surely we wouldn't do that if it weren't competitive. Texas now reporting for Minmax, but Jimmy Carter can still win, provided every state left in the nation vote for him, including Utah. Minmax has now surpassed 270 electoral votes, but Jimmy Carter can still win, provided a meteor strike obliterates several of the states who have voted for Minmax before the end of election night. Sources in state now suggest that Utah will most likely not vote for Jimmy Carter unless God himself descends from the heavens to command it, so we're getting 50 50 odds there. We're getting word now that the hipster capital of the nation has voted Republican, and a deformed Superman has been seen demolishing Metropolis while shouting Bizarro number one. Hawaii and Alaska are the only states left to report in now, but do they even really count? Ladies and gentlemen, in a turn of events that no one could possibly have predicted, Minmax the Clown has been elected President of the United States. Sources in the state now suggest that Utah will most likely not vote for Jimmy Carter unless God himself suggests. <laughs> <laughs> Min Max has now surpassed 270 electoral votes, but Jimmy Carter can still win Friday and meet your strike of blurs. <laughs> Sources in state now suggest that Utah will most likely not vote for Jimmy Carter unless God himself descends from the heavens again. <laughs>